Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Calculator Tricks. So on this one, I want to teach you guys how to take a formula and save it in your calculator and then pull it up at any time and plug values into it and get an answer without retyping the formula or memorizing the formula. So in order to do that, I came up with the uh, a quadratic equation on the side here, y equals 2x squared minus 4x plus 5. And we're going to use that to learn how to manipulate the calculator. Typically, plugging in points here is okay to do it in your head. It's medium effort to do it on paper, but I'm going to show you just a super easy way. We're going to go over to the menu portion. Actually, before we do that, we're at the home screen, so i got to get into the scratch pad here. I'm going to go to menu, actions, and then define. I'm going to define a formula right now, and we're actually just going to call it y. So that's the name of it. But inside parentheses, I'm going to say, hey, here's the variables that I'm going to use. Now, on this one, I'm going to use the x's. And if you look at that, it looks awful lot like our f of x that we did in class. Uh, so this is just y of x, or the function of y using variables x. And we're going to call that equal to 2x squared minus 4x plus 5. And if I did this correctly, when I hit enter, it's going to say done. If you did it incorrectly, you're going to see an error. The major errors that I see, kids will not put the variable in. They just say y equals. They copy exactly what's written here for homework or the book or on a test. You have to say y, parenthesis, the variables you're using, and parenthesis. Another common mistake I see is right here where it's x squared. Oftentimes, students want to hit this x squared button for both of them, but all that does is just takes the 2 and square that, and you forget your x, and they just keep plowing forward, and then they get an error. So now that I have this defined, I have to actually pull this back up again to plug values in. So let me go over to this right here, and what number would I actually want to plug into a formula like this? Well, if I do my negative b over 2a, I'm going to get a 1. And the 1 is the x-coordinate of my vertex. So that's a normal thing to plug in for the first time. So coming back over to the, to the calculator, I'm going to go to VAR button, or variable. And you see there, I have it already stored in there. There's my y, so I'm going to click on that. And it's telling me, hey, y of x. But on this one, I don't want x. I want to get real specific and say, what is the function of y when x equals 1? And if I hit enter, there's my 3. So I can take this and start to build my xy chart. My first x is the 1, and there's the 3 that I get back. Now my next normal points that I'll probably get is probably something a little bit more than 1 and probably something a little bit less than 1, keeping in mind that a parabola is symmetric. So I'm going to go for a 0 and a 2. So I come back around my calculator, variable, y, and this time I can hit 0, enter, variable, y, 2, enter, and look, they're both 5, which shouldn't really surprise us because after the vertex, it should be symmetrical if I go the same amount up and the same amount down. Two more things to plug in. Let's go with a negative 1 and a 3. This time I'm only going to plug in one thing. There's my y when x equals 3, and there's my 11, and so there's my xy chart. I could then take those five points and go off and graph them. So that is the power of defining a function, making sure I get done, going back over to variable, choosing what I just created, and then just plugging in as many points as I want and just filling in my xy chart. Very valuable tool on the calculator. You can use it for any formula. In fact, Let's go over here, and let's type in our vertex. Now, a vertex, you notice, doesn't have just one variable. It's got two, the a and the b. So this is a nice one to do just so that we know how to deal with two variables. Again, I'm going to go to Menu, Action, Define, and this time I'm going to call my formula Vertex. Now, I absolutely positively have to have my parentheses. 
And this time my variables are a and b. But if I just put a, b next to each other, that would be a times b, and I can't have that. So just like in English class, I'm going to divide a list with commas. So there's vertex a, b, and that is going to equal, and now I've got to go to my fraction tool, control there, and it's negative b, come down over 2a. Come out of there, hit enter, and again, if I did it correctly, it'll say done. Now I can go in and hit my variable key, and there's the two functions that I have saved so far. Vertex, let's say my A value, actually on the last problem, my A value, I believe was, uh, actually I forget what it was, so we'll just say that my, vert, my A was 5, comma, and let's say the B was 7. Well, if that was the case and I hit enter, my vertex, my X coordinate of my vertex is going to be negative 7 over 10. I hope you guys found this helpful. Please, by all means, rewind, pause, do whatever you need to do, but this is a skill that will come very much in handy during the test.